everyone, my name's Amy and I'm your vegan dietetics student and today we're going to be talking about Dr. Barry's recent live stream on saturated fat. Apparently there's going to be a new article published in the journal for the American College of Cardiology that is specifically talking about how saturated fat doesn't affect heart disease in people. So. We're going to be looking at this today and some of the other randomized controlled trials that he brought up in this live stream. So if at any point you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. Also, check me out on all of this social media so that you can see daily tips, tricks, and facts about nutrition, fitness, and veganism. Now, let's get started. Within the first two minutes of him starting this video, he actually says something like this. Uh, the American College of Cardiology stopped recommending a minimum intake of cholesterol because they well knew that eating cholesterol does not raise your cholesterol. There has been a lot of research that has been biased by industry funding in this area of research in particular. There was actually a systematic review that looks at this and found that half of the studies specifically looking at eggs raising cholesterol actually came up with a different conclusion than their actual research said, which is very telling for how much industry funding is affecting research like this. So yes, eating cholesterol does actually affect a person's cholesterol. I think that enough people who are eating keto and low carb and carnivore have shared their health transformation story with their doctor and their healthcare provider and their cardiologist and their endocrinologist. I think enough of you guys have done that, that it has trickled up to the top and the powers that be at the, at the ACC realize that the advice that they've been giving is stupid and not only stupid, but it's harmful. They've been harming people. And so the, the AHA and the ACC are very much a plant-based organization. I want you to understand that. Just because an organization promotes a diet that happens to be higher in plants does not actually mean that it is essentially a plant-based organization. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you go over to the AHA website, their recommendations for a diet actually include chicken, eggs, and dairy in it, as well as at the very bottom of their page, they have an affiliate link for an egg company. I don't think a plant-based organization would do this because a fully plant-based diet, which is what he's claiming that this organization is promoting, actually is a diet that is only plants and based around whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables. And this organization does not actually appear to look like that. I do agree that the AHA could be doing better with their dietary recommendations for heart disease, but I believe that it should be recommending a whole food plant-based diet instead. Because when you look at Dr. Esselstyn's study on 198 patients and a whole food plant-based diet, they were actually able to reverse heart disease. Also, they actually did a randomized controlled trial on their suggested diet versus a plant-based one, and they found that actually plant-based diet did slightly better than the diet they suggested. Because you've heard so many people say, well, there's just no research to back up keto or, or, or carnivore or low carb, that it's safe. If you, I mean, yeah, you might lose weight and reverse your diabetes and reverse your fatty liver, but you're going to die of a heart attack. So that's bogus. That's not true. The fact that this plant-based organization, the ACC, whose first cousin, kissing first cousins with the AHA, the fact that they allowed this to be published means that they know. Just because something is being published by a journal does not necessarily mean that they actually agree with it. It's good to be able to see differing opinions about things in order to be able to advance science. And so by publishing this, they're not actually saying, hey, we agree with this. Instead, they're allowing a differing opinion to be published in their journal and possibly allow people to be able to 
think about things in a slightly different way. So let's actually look at the study that Dr. Barry is talking about. The thing we're going to need to look at for this article happens to be its funding sources. And if you look at its funding sources, it actually happens to be funded by a meat, dairy, or egg industry from somewhere around the world. And some of them are even funded by keto organizations as well. So this is going to be a major bias for all of these people. Industry funding can really bias studies and studies should be funded instead by nonprofit organizations so that people don't actually have the tendency to do stuff towards the people who are actually funding their research. If you want to look into a little bit more about why industry funding can actually sway science and whether or not it actually does, check out this video where I go a little bit more in depth about that and about how it actually has been done in the past, specifically with cigarettes. So the entire reason that your doctor or your dietitian or your mama tells you, oh, I heard bad things about keto. You better not eat keto. You'll have a heart attack. Well, there's only one peg they were hanging their coat on. It was, it was full of saturated fat. And this review, and this is not new research, this is basically just an honest review of existing research is what this is. These guys didn't do any research. So if every single one of these guys is funded by big meat, that's irrelevant because they didn't do new research. They talked about old research that had been ignored up until the present. The fact that this article is a review actually makes it easier for the scientists to be able to sway what they want to talk about. And this is because with a randomized controlled trial, you actually have data that you're working with. You can mess with the methods of collecting that data, or you can come up with with a conclusion that is different than what the data actually says, but that's about all you can do to be able to sway a trial like that into the side that you want it to be on. On the other hand, when you're working with a secondary source or something that utilizes data that has already been collected, you have more leeway because you have control over what studies you're going to look at and how you're going to collect them. What is this article arguing for then? It is arguing for three things. One, that low fat diets are unhealthy. Two, that carbohydrates are unhealthy. And three, that saturated fat has no effect on a person's heart health. In this article, they argue against low fat diets by using the PREDIMED study. It is a two year long randomized controlled trial that compared a standard low fat diet to a Mediterranean diet that either had nuts or olive oil in it. Now, while this study did find that the Mediterranean diet that was higher fat did actually have better effects on heart health, the issues with this study happened to be that the low fat diet wasn't necessarily the same as the intervention diet. A Mediterranean diet is a diet that happens to be high in whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans. A standard low fat diet, on the other hand, could literally be made up of nothing but low fat Twinkies and still be completely compliant. And if you actually look at the data provided from the study, the control diet ate less fruits, vegetables, and beans than did the Mediterranean diet, all three of which have been found to be beneficial for heart health. And therefore, you can be comparing two completely different diets and not necessarily comparing the fat content found within either of those diets. In this article, they do claim that when you replace saturated fat with carbohydrates in a person's diet, that you actually raise a person's risk of heart disease. Now, when you actually look at the three studies that they cited for this, two of them do something very specific. Those two actually differentiate between refined carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. One of them doesn't and lumps them all together. The reason for this distinction is very important. 
Complex carbohydrates contain quite a bit of fiber and antioxidants versus refined carbohydrates, which don't. But in the article, they lump all carbohydrates together, including complex carbohydrates, actually can raise a person's risk for heart disease, which is not proven in the scientific literature. Also, this study from the journal The Lancet specifically looked at refined carbohydrates versus unrefined carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates and found that a higher fiber intake was associated with decreased risk a higher whole grain intake was associated with a decreased risk, and lower glycemic index carbohydrates were also associated with decreased risk for these things. They also talk about diabetes and insulin resistance, specifically saying this. That sounds really fascinating, doesn't it? The only problem is the citation that they actually give for that is a long discussion from 2008 about intramyocellular lipids or fat that is inside of a person's muscle. Now, maybe I missed the part where they actually talk about how carbohydrates can increase a person's diabetes risk, but I do know that in the article that they cite, it actually does say this. Interventions that manipulate intramyocellular lipids demonstrate the close coupling of intramyocellular lipids and the development of insulin resistance. For example, healthy subjects showed a decrease in insulin sensitivity and an increase in intramyocellular lipids following the acute infusion of intravenous lipid. Basically, when fat was pumped into a person's veins, their insulin resistance increased. And the thing is, is that when you actually look at this randomized controlled trial comparing saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and refined carbohydrates, they found that when people were overconsuming calories, that it was the saturated fat that caused people to gain the most amount of fat inside of their liver and on their bodies versus the other two, with the second being refined carbohydrates. They also talk about saturated fat and its effects on cholesterol, specifically saying that people should not stop eating saturated fat because their HDL cholesterol could drop. There is a decent amount of research that shows that HDL cholesterol might not be as beneficial as a lot of people seem to believe that it is, especially when a person is eating saturated fat. This study looked at the consumption of saturated fat and what happened to the HDL cholesterol inside of a person's blood, and they found that when people were eating saturated fat, that it actually decreased the anti-inflammatory effect of HDL cholesterol. On top of that, there have been some studies that looked at people who are genetically more predisposed to having high HDL cholesterol, and they didn't find any benefit for their increased HDL cholesterol in their blood. And finally, HDL cholesterol, much like other types of cholesterol, can actually be oxidized, which makes it even more damaging as well. And according to this study, when people actually decrease the amount of oxidized HDL cholesterol inside of their blood, they are actually able to decrease their overall risk for heart disease. So having higher HDL cholesterol is not going to be a good thing. And that's not a reason why people should continue to eat things that actually have saturated fat in it. At the very end of their study, they also say this. The study they cite is the very same study that went through a big scandal last year because it was funded deeply by the meat industry and had several issues with the way that it was put together. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about that specific study, I have this video specifically talking about it. But basically, it's not a very good study to base this recommendation off of because they didn't actually compare diets that had red meat to diets without red meat. They only compared it to diets low in red meat. And while that may sound like a good comparison, it 
isn't because you're not able to actually fully determine whether or not there is any bad effects from the red meat on a person because you're not comparing it to something that doesn't have that component in it. You need to compare having the component to not having it in order to be able to draw conclusions like that. So is this new article absolutely life changing? No, no, they're not. All right. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I also hope that you always remember to love God, eat greens, get moving. See you in the next video.